How am I going to build a model? This time you can tell me. Where do I go to build a model? File. Good. File new. New model. There we go. And this is going to be called ABM. Okay. I don't want to get in another cross border fight. Okay. Um, I'm tempted to say neighborhood, but there'll be a fight that breaks out. Is there a U? Um, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to say NBHD. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll settle it. Um, that's the NAFTA solution um, or USMCA, um, whatever it is these days. Um, and uh, the time unit is going to be hours. No, that's interesting. Neighborhood mobility. I'll call it version one. And I'll be posting this periodically. Neighborhood mobility, version one. Okay, ready? Okay. Mr. Rogers' neighborhood would include a U. Um, okay. Um, so, um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use this model to explore um, location and mobility and a diversity of agent types. Okay. Um, and so, we're going to build our repertoire along several dimensions. So, um, what I'd like to do is I'm going to create some agent types, theories of agenthood for four, count them, different types of things. We're going to have homes, we're going to have workplaces, we're going to have schools, and we're going to have persons. Mm. Okay? And each of them will be associated with a population as well. But we need a theory of homehood, a theory of workplacehood, schoolhood, and personhood. Um, so let's add them in. I'm going to say new agent type. And the first thing we're going to build is a home. Okay. Okay. Home. Ladies and gentlemen. Home. Okay. And we're going to put a nice little picture on this. Okay. So we're going to go to palette. We're going to go down to image to pictures. And we can pick our, our picture. So we're going to pick a house, OK? Is that OK? I'm going to pick a house. So we had a, a very interesting exchange at one point, because we were building up a, a mobility model with um, clinics. Hmm? And, and people are presenting for clinics. And there was a question over, if you thought the discussion with a, a you was bad, you want to show a healthcare clinic. What icon should we use for it? That came the question. Is it a more like a warehouse, a retail, a retail store, or a, a, factory, a factory of health? Um, uh, yes, exactly. Country context, indeed. So we added a house here, and we avoided the the fight there. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. That's a good question. You can add images. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pr pretty darn certain you can do this. Yeah. No, 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 it's, it's great. Yeah, um, my colleague, Jeff McDonald, who is one of my most esteemed fellow modelers, I, I, I listen extremely closely to, to what he says. He's just a master at picking little images. And um, you'd have a lot of fun if, if we went and saw his, uh, his uh, insight maker images. We'll, we'll save that for, for a bit of mirth sometime when we're feeling um, a, bit, a, a, a bit like we need a bit of energy. Um, Okay, so we added a theory of homehood, and it, right now that consists of just a, 
a home. But we're going to add more substantive things like uh, a location to that soon enough. Next, we're going to add in a workplace. Okay. Um, oh, not a new model. I'm going to add in new agent type, and it's going to be called a workplace. Okay. And I'm going to create this model, this uh, agent from scratch, and I'm going to drag into it a, let's say a shop. Um, you could do it a retail store. I'm not going to be particular about that. Um, uh, next, um, I'm going to add in a school. Okay, um, it's an agent type, and it's a school. Now, what I'm doing here, it's actually food for thought because um, I'm actually creating these things which, which won't have a lot of processes associated with it, but they could. A school could have screening process, right? It could have rules associated with it. It could have a certain schedule the students come and or, or students are tested. Um, homes could have certain dynamics associated with them, for sure. Um, workplaces, likewise. Um, so although we don't have time to really explicate it here, um, it bears, bears noting that we can have more repertoire here. Okay, um, for school, I, I'm not quite sure the best one to include here. Um, I, I don't wanna make it a box. Um, maybe I'll make it a warehouse, if that's okay. I, I don't like that, but probably better than a fighter jet. Um, and um, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't think it's, it's horrible. Um, uh, okay, um, and finally, we're gonna have person, okay? Um, and we're going to add in a person. There we go, person. Okay, so, you know, we're down in the salt mines right now, but it won't be too long before we pop up. Now, for a person, um, I think we'll give it some sort of anthropomorphic image this time. There we go, okay? I dragged it out from pictures this kind of image there, but if you feel inspired to have something more, um, detect a certain gender bias in these, these things, but um, you could drag in a patient if you want to, although that image always made me uncomfortable because it looked like he was in a straight jacket or something. Um, okay, um, great. Uh, so, um, so we have, Theories of personhood, schoolhood, workplacehood, and not least, home. home. Great. Um, what are we lacking? If we run this model, what will we see? Anyone? We don't have any populations. We need populations, don't we? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to drag in. How do we create populations? We. I'm sorry, draw, draw them yeah, down main, exactly. Um, okay, but I want you to draw them in a certain order, please, okay? Um, uh, so what I'm going to do is to draw first, so schools, workplaces, and homes can go in any order, but they should go before people, and I'll tell you why, okay? Okay, so um, I'm gonna drag in, and for my case, oh, where, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? This is a rookie mistake. Yeah, I don't want to put it in person. I want to put it in main. I want to go down main. Hmm. Okay, um, great. So I will drag, drag in home there. Notice it calls it homes, but I really want to call it, I mean, it calls it home, but I really want to call it homes. And what do I need to do to turn it into a population? Is it already a population? Population of agents, darn right. And I will make it for home 50 homes, five zero. Now, if we were serious about it, we'd add in parameters for each of these, but I want to move quickly and live light on the land. So, so um, I'm not going to add those in right now. And I'm going to feel guilty all day because of it, because I've given you bad modeling practice. Um, I, I, I like this is, this is almost unforgivable in my mind, but. But we want to we want to go quickly, 
Parameters are your friend. You want to add parameters so you can change these assumptions easily in your um, in your um, uh, in your scenario. Okay. Um, can I zoom in? I most certainly can. Uh, yes, Larissa. Exactly. Exactly. And actually, there's a hidden relationship here. Like I'm doing 50 homes, I'm going to do 250 people. Really, there's a hidden relationship that that you know I want each home to be five people, something like that. Oh, oh, I feel so beset by guilt. I feel racked by guilt. Um, I feel ashamed. Um, I, I feel like I have no sense of shame. I have no sense of dignity. What am I teaching you? Um, uh, oh, this is horrible. Oh, this is horrible. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. I, 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 I will, I will loose the hounds. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to the pallet. I'm going to go down to agent, and I'm going to teach you a good lesson. <laughs> so I'm going to drag in a parameter. I'm going to make it population size. Okay, and this is going to be. I'm going to do something that's less egregious, but still light. Okay, so it's going to be a population size, and its default value is going to be 250. Okay. So that's that's just the default. If we don't specify, if we don't override it, we can have scenarios that override it. In other words, experiment. You ready with for this? Okay. By the way, if you click these things, you can drag the names around, and it's real nice. It's real nice, like okay. So homes, um, uh, the initial number of people in homes is going to be, and I feel even guilty for this, but it's a lot better. It's going to be population size. Ready? Population size divided by five. Okay. So, so basically, there's going to be five people per home. If you have 100 people in the population, there's going to be 20 homes. One home for every five people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't feel as bad hard coding that because that's not likely to change that rate here. You always want to. Kind of get a sense of what things might have to change frequently. The population might have to change frequently. And that's why I was feeling beset by, racked by guilt of a most, of a most um, a distressing sort. Okay, so that's homes. Um, how are we going to add in others? How are we going to add in workplaces? What do I do? Someone tell me what to do. What do I do to add in workplace population? Yeah, exactly. Um, yep. And I'll call it workplace says, boom. I'll bring it down next to it. And because there's no bracket, what do I have to do? The fact that there's no bracket here is a sign. It's warning me that I have to do what? Population. You got it. And the number of workplaces here is going to be equal to um, uh, population size. Hey, population size here divided by 10. Population, okay. Um, population size divided by 10. Okay. 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 Great. Because they're encoding basically, I mean, I am here choosing them to say roughly there's 10 people per workplace. There's five people per home. So that's why I'm putting them in. If the number of homes is, is one fifth of the size of the population, meaning there's five people per home. And, you know, if this were my model, I might go and, and encode a parameter for those ratios, but because it um, yeah, okay, so there's a question, and believe me, I was monitoring this. So Sarah asked presciently, is there a problem because the double number will be determined? So this is the secret truth. Um, uh, this is the secret truth. The secret truth is 
this is, first of all, it's, it's calculating integer here. And, um, and so Sarah was concerned this is going to return uh, a, a double precision value, but it never does. Okay. This is always in Java. If you have an integer divided by an integer, it always returns an integer. And often that's a, but that's a problem because it rounds it off in bad ways. But here it is deliberately done as such. So if you if it were to return a, a double, you would you do this and it would return a double precision value. But you're, this is going to return an integer. And you want to be very careful about that because sometimes you actually do want it to return a double, and you cannot specify it this way. You you would specify it like this to return a double. So this is actually safe returning an integer. It's a good question, but it's it's um, um, it's it's very helpful. Okay. So, um, yeah, Larissa noted that really we only have to change it in one place and all these will follow through. It'll, it'll use the correct value for each of them. Okay, let's finish the, the thought here. So, um, we're going to add a population of schools. Mm -hmm. Schools next, schools. And we're going to, following that, have a population of Asian. Okay, sorry. And so, the, for schools, it will be um, it'll be uh, the population size divided by I'll make it divided by fifty. Uh, I'm sorry, by um, yeah, by fifty. Um, uh, I mean, you can you can pick uh, your size if you like it. These are not in any way privileged. Um, and finally, I'm going to add, and this is important. Finally, I add in the person population. Person. Now, why did I do it in this order? I did it in this order because it turns out persons are going to, when we create a person, we want to be able to assign them right then and there their home, their school, their workplace. Mm -hmm. And for that to happen, those schools, workplaces, and homes have to be established. So by adding them in that order, we ensured that homes, workplaces, and schools were, were created before um, persons. Okay. Um, that was kind of the secret. Um, uh, so from double to int, um, okay, yeah. So it's very likely associated with, he left it at 10.0 or something. Yeah. Um, that, that was what Sarah was saying. And you don't want to do that. You don't want to do this. You want to leave it like this as an integer. Okay. Don't don't put a you only put a you you, you do put um divided by something that's a you know a decimal value like that if you want it to be a double precision value. You should do it like that. Don't put it like this if you want. But um but here we want the integer. Um, yeah, I mentioned that earlier. Right, right, yeah. So, so I mentioned earlier that this is actually a count of people in the population, or a count of people, a count of ages. It's a number of ages. School population, and these are really not too important, but it was divided by 50. Workplaces was divided by 10. Persons divided by, a person is going to be default 100. But, um, but actually, so it's not going to be default hundred. What is the the person population going to be? Yes, type guest in thing in Java. Sorry, yeah, population. And if you want to be really careful, you can say this dot population times. But oop, oh, this dot population. Yes, type guest. This is all Java. Okay, uh, so. Build early, build often. Make sure this is a happy camper. There we go. And um, oh, that's interesting. Um, so why isn't it showing an obvious message? Okay, that's really a thing. Wade, isn't that interesting? Yeah, view console. Our problem. No, no problem. Um, 
Oh, have I? Um, that's really interesting. Okay, normally it will it will just say you know build completed successfully. I'm I'm not uh, not sure why it didn't. If I add, I'm probably I'm tempted to close my any logic and open it again. Um, what do you think, Wade? Uh, it's not a bad idea, indeed. In fact, I will close this and I will post it. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's actually just fine, but I just I will need that in the future, and it's not printing that message, and I find that unsettling. Um, and uh, hygienically, it can be nice to kind of close it every once in a while. Don't you agree, Wade? Indeed. <laughs> right. Well spoken. Um, indeed. Indeed, um, uh, you could probably get Wade to tell you quite some horror stories if you were so inclined. Okay, um, so let's get this up on the site though, because um, I want to. Um, uh, so I want to do example models. Uh, go uh, tinyurl.com. Um, and well, okay, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this over there. Get over there. Um, and fine, I'll just put it here and we will put it in uh, models built in class. I'm going to put version one. Um, I did open it again. Notice it, it, it reopened. If you, if you close this, it'll reopen. Hey, come on, get out of there. Um, it'll reopen this model and I'm going to build it and, and it's a happy change. See that? So it's it's happiness is my happiness. Um, so I'm just going to say upload and I'm going to put it in my models neighborhood version one. There we go. So if anyone wants it, it's there. Come and get it. Okay. I'm gonna do save as as version two now. There we go. Okay. Okay. So we're we're cooking with gas now. Um, we've done sort of a lot of tedious stuff. And now it's going to be, it's going to start getting more fun. Let's go run this, first of all. Let's go run it. What should we see if we see it? Anyone? Well, we see these things have populations. That's all good. But where are the people? Tell me that. Where are they? Indeed. Indeed. Okay. They're stacked on top of each other like cordwood. And so we want to... Um, how would we distribute these around in, in some sort of uh, random way? How could we do that? I thought I, I gave you a suggestion for that earlier. Anyone remember? There's one way that would actually cover a name for all these different ones. Space and networks, we could set it to random. There we go. Let's run it, shall we? Okay, hearing no objections. Um, I'm going to run it. And there we go. Okay. Now, this is better than what we saw before, having them stacked. But we want to lend people homes, don't we? We want to have them appear in homes. And we want them to, to go to their schools or workplaces, depending on their age. Okay. Okay. We're getting traction here, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting traction. Okay. Okay. Now. Let's go to person. We're going to lend a person an attribute that's going to determine, is this a type of person, everyone that's going to have a home in this model? That's, you know, Larissa is examining situations where that's not true in models, but um, uh, everyone's going to have a home, but people are going to have either workplaces or schools based on a certain characteristic. And what crazy is that characteristic? Age and deed. Now, um, we're going to add in a characteristic of age so that people have ages. Where do I put that in the model? Can anyone tell me? Where in the model would that go? Person and deed, because it's a characteristic, of, of, it's an aspect of person, right? So we go here to agent and we drag in the person. And I'm going to call this something specific. 
I'm going to call it age in years. The reason I did that is the time unit here is not years. Anyone remember what it is? Hours. So it's, um, uh, this is age in years. We, we want to make clear when we use that value, it's not in hours. It's, it's, it's in years, it's measured in years. Are you okay with this? Okay. Okay, good. Um, so um, uh, we're going to set a default value of, we'll say minus one, just so we know if, if, if we didn't assign it, it's probably a good practice. Um, but uh, we're going to draw this from a distribution. Where do we go in the model to to use different, to, you know, to assign, to, to characterize the distribution out of which we want to draw age. Where would we go? Where, what is it that sets the characteristics of the people, the value to assume for parameters? It's the population. Because remember, parameters in any logic serve two, serve two purposes. They encode assumptions and they communicate those assumptions to the agent holding that parameter, part of the model holding that parameter from the point of creation. The thing that creates the, the person for this model right now is the persons, we, should call, we shouldn't call persons, I'm gonna call population. I think it, persons is a bit fancy. So right now it says age in years minus one because that was the default value. And I'm gonna say uniform between zero and really, if I want to be careful, it's 0, 0.0 and 65.0. Now, it would let me get away with saying zero by converting it to a double and 65 by converting it to a row. But it's good hygiene to make it double. And there's reasons for it, particularly when you divide by things. You don't want to be dividing by an integer and get something back that's an integer when you really had in mind a a double precision division. So you want to be careful about labeling things to zero if they're if they're constants. This is good good hygienic practice. Okay, there we go. Okay, are we ready for this? Are we ready? Okay. Um, good. So what I'm going to do is um, um, I'm going to run this model, and we should be able to go see if people have different ages. Um, we could play some nice games and, and actually give them different sizes based on that. And it's very tempting to do that. But I want to live lightly and move quickly on the land. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Where in the model could I, I drill down to level of person and see what people's ages are? Bottom right, pull it down. Where do I go here? Yeah, the dot, dot, dot here, go down to population. By the way, notice all these Populations of there go there it is. Here's a 20, 25, 20 point five year old. Right? Here's a 26 year old. Here's a 49 year old. Here's a 31, 28, 50, 62. Hmm. Find someone finds general age there. Um, okay, great. So um, we're we're in um, we're in good shape. Um, so let's, um, I'm going to sort of neaten this up. We have people with ages, and, and this is great. Okay, now, now we're going to do something more interesting next. Each person will be associated with, guess what? The theory of personhood is associated with what? Yeah, homes, workplaces, and schools. Okay, so it's a theory of personhood. So where is this in the model? Person, indeed, we speak well. Okay, so person. So we want to add what? To associate this person with a home, what do we add? We add a what? This is something that's not changing. It's an assumption about this person. That's a single value that's not changing. What would it be? It's, it's, it's what? Parameter, it's a parameter. Parameter. Don't think parameters are just for things like numbers. No, 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 no. no, no. It can refer to other things. So I'm going to first and foremost give this person a home because everyone 
deserves a home, okay? That's a home. And the type of this is going to be, guess what? Anyone want to pick one of those? Home, indeed. Home, indeed. With a capital H, right? Because it's, capital H is kind of, it's, it's, a, it's something that accords with the theory of homehood. So it's one of these homes described by, by these characteristics. This is the particular home, lowercase. Okay, great. And I'm tempted to say uh, uh, a default value of null, meaning like it, it, it's no home if we don't specify it. So we know, oh, something's wrong. We don't have a home there. Um, something is terribly wrong. With the, with the world if people aren't given access to homes. Okay, um, great. And I wanna do the same thing with workplaces and schools. Are you ready? Okay. Um, so we're going to add in parameters for workplace. Now maybe, maybe this is a child and they don't yet need a workplace, but in the fullness of time, they will need a workplace. So. Uh, workplace, guess what type it is? Workplace, indeed. And next, we want a school. And guess what school it is? Oh, guess what type it is? It's a school. A school, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, there we go. Are we ready for that? And uh, let's give them uh, default values of null, too. Now, be careful with null. Null is a, null is a, is a, is a pox upon the world. Um, uh, so I used to tell my students sometimes in jest that the Roman Empire fell because of null, but it's, it's actually not true. But null has caused all sorts of problems. Um, bad things have happened because of being careless about null. Here we're using it to flag a value that's not legitimate, okay? And that's a comparatively safer use of, of null, but, but you have to be cautious with null. Null is, null is a slippery character. Okay, so um, ladies and gentlemen, age and years, where do we specify the value for age and years? The, the, the distribution to use for the population? It was in what? In population, in, in Maine. So we're gonna do the same thing with the others. There we are. So here's Maine. We're going to go down Maine, and we are going to assign for the population of people a random home. Get that? Are we okay with that? Okay. Okay. This is great. Um, so here we go. Um, so we're going to do homes dot. Okay, um, and we'll say dot random. Okay, boom. There we go. Um, and if I say yes, it will say it's a happy camper. Build completed successfully. For workplace, I'm going to say guess what? Workplaces dot random. I'm going to draw a random workplace for this person. Okay. Now, um, yeah, yeah, um, okay. Now for schools, I wanna add a little bit of twist to this. I wanna find them the nearest school. Workplaces, I'll give them a workplace in our homes, I'm gonna give them a, but for school, I wanna give them a, a school that's the closest to their home. Is that okay? Okay, so let me let me show you a pretty nifty thing. Can I show it to you? Thank you. Um, so I'm going to say get nearest agent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, actually, do, 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 uh, do, do, do. okay, so um, yes, yes, you can do this. Um, in, okay, and I'm going to say, okay, wait a minute. No, no, no. Okay, I've got to be careful here. Yes. Um, 
ooh, 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 ooh. Um, um, I think we could do this. I, I was actually going to do it in the agent, but I think we could we could do. Sorry. Um. Uh, so yes, I think we could do this. Self dot home dot guest get nearest agent in the schools. Um. Um. Right. Um. Uh. Okay. Um. And uh, yeah, I actually did it differently in the past, but I think this right. So the nearest agent to their home for this person, remember self is when I'm creating agent, this refers to kind of myself, this is the agent under construction, their home, I'm gonna find the nearest school to it. That's what that's saying. Wait, do you see any problem with that? That's good. Well, I appreciate. It. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So, can we can we try running this model? Try building it. Make sure it's a happy camper. Who needs TA help? The TAs, their numbers have swelled. I think Narges is outside. I think, if we're not mistaken. Um, okay. How would I check if those very those parameters are filled in? Where would I go? Speak on use. Yeah, that, that's right. So there you go. Each This is someone, they're assigned to home 33, school two, because I think that's as close as school to their home, and workplace 10. Here, by contrast, is person one. They're, they're also person one, different age. They're assigned to workplace eight in homes 38, but their school is also the nearest. This is, this is the nearest school. Are you okay with this? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we're cooking with gas. Now we have people, we have each person as a home, each person as a workplace, each person as a school. The school is the closest one to their home. The workplace is chosen randomly and they have an agent years. Are we okay with this? Okay, so this, this is pretty interesting, but the fun stuff is still coming, the really fun stuff. Okay, okay, now, now, cool. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to give them some behavior. What's a common way in any logic agent-based models to give someone a behavior to add a what? State chart. Okay, so we're going to add a state chart. State chart entry point, and this is going to be called, let's say, mobility state chart. You know, daily, daily mobility. Are we okay with that? Okay. Um, okay. Um, and we will go to a state here, um, uh, which is first, they're at home. Um, at home, capital A. By the way, this is strong. Um, so I'm gonna make it hard to boom. No. Okay. There we go. At home. Do you see that? Somehow it's a bit off kilter. Um this is gonna be finicky. Uh, I wanted to make it nice and centered. Um maybe I'll put it closer to center. It can be kind of funny. Okay. And guess what's going to happen when they're at home? When they enter at home, guess what's going to happen? Where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? When they enter at home, they're going to be going to their home. Well, well spoken. Yeah. Now, um, um, they're going to head home. Okay. Now, there's actually a different way you could finesse this. You could have them here jump to their home at first, and then they don't even have to move here. Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll do that. I'll have them jump to their home. I'll have them leap 
leap to their home. Are we okay with that? Okay, so I'm gonna say this dot jump, jump to, and guess where they're gonna to jump to? To where are they gonna jump? Whither will they go? Yeah, this dot home. Well spoken, well spoken. Are you, are you ready? Okay, you ready to try this? Okay, who wants to see that on the big screen? Big, okay. Is that for the big screen? Yeah, yeah, okay, you bet. Um, boom, boom. Is that okay? They're gonna jump them to their home, ladies and gentlemen. They're gonna leap discontinuously to their home. That's, that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. We'll take care of their movement between these places soon enough. Are you ready for this? Ready or not? You need a bit more time? Who needs a bit more time? Anyone? Okay, okay. Um, TAs deploy. I, I there's okay. Um, uh, there's online errors as well. Okay. Um, code red. Code red. Okay. Um, I will try building mine. Oh, oh, look at that jump to. Oh my gosh. Oh no. That's why. That's why. Okay. Um, so there's a. Um, I think it's the Norwegian army has a manual. Um, and it's, it, it gives a bunch of guidelines for soldiers, particularly soldiers out on exercises in the countryside and so on. And one of its principles is, um, if you're lost, try to, try to follow the map. Um, however, if, if your eyes tell you one thing and the map tells you something else, believe your eyes. <laughs> and so... So yeah, this is this is a mistake on my part. Um, this is a mistake on the map. Okay. So um, I thought it would. There actually are ones that will take what's called a, a location here, but or a point rather. But this is not one of them. So I will say dot get, and oh, there's going to be a get x here, um, and a get y. Gosh, I I was pretty sure that any logic now had a jump to point or something like that. Um, wait, do you happen to remember that? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, that would have been more sweet, right? This is, this is a lot of, so you're saying I could have said home, this dot home dot get position. Is it get position like that? Is that right? Oh, yeah, no. yeah, like that, okay, there we go. Okay, so that's less ugly. If you want it to be more terse, you could just say home dot get. There we go. Uh, I will put this on the big screen. So, um, thanks, Jake, yeah. good. Okay. Sorry. Well, I like this, but um, the the deal is it, th there's actually one or two points in the boot camp you want to where you will need to be really careful about this, particularly when you're dealing with multiple agents and like a mother gives birth to children and you're setting things for the children versus the mother's situation. And you want to be conscious about who you're calling it on, the child or on the mother. And you want to think about it explicitly. And as such, I, I often try to inculcate students with being careful by referring to this. But at some point, the students become mature enough that, um, that it's not needed. And um, I'm tempted for clarity to omit it. So there's kind of several aesthetics fighting in my mind. and. Um, I'm going to here just say home. We're really only dealing um, here with uh, with dynamics that involve um, uh, 
sort of we're not creating a new agent or something. So I'm going to say home. Um, it's the same as this home, um, but sometimes it is worth being careful. Okay, so let's run this thing. Let's run it. So build, make sure it's happy, and then I'm going to say uh, run and watch this. Okay, what happened? What changed? Can anyone say? They're all in their home. Great. Okay, now, now, ladies and gentlemen, we are set to do something really interesting. So we are going to have people circulate between their homes and either workplaces or schools based on their what? Age and deed. Age and deed. So we're going to add in, how would I do that? Well, um, we'll add in at, guess what? At what? At school. And we'll add in an at what? Workplace, darn right, at workplace. There we go. Mm. And now, what do we need to move them between those states? We need a what? What do we use when we have a state chart and we need to go from one state to the other, undertake an action? Sorry, um, sorry we need a transition right? um, like that. Sorry, uh, transition. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, I'm not saying something more profound, unfortunately, in this case. Um, uh, I can understand why you might have thought that. But no. um, I'm just saying something kind of, kind of uh, prosaic here. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's a transition, right? Uh, sorry? You can, in fact. Um, and in fact, we probably would be better suited to do that. So I, I like that idea. I think that's conceptually simpler because they're basically changing where they are. We could do it either way, it turns out. Um, but let's let's do it with a branch. I kind of like that idea. So here we go. My original plan had it doing it with a branch, but I kind of didn't bother because it's not necessary. But yeah, let's do it. Sure. Okay. Um, so we have a branch, this is rehearse our branch skills. Branch, branch, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. There we go, boom. There we go, ready? Okay. Um, and uh, which, what's gonna lead them to go to school or the workplace? They're what? They're eight. Now notice these are both red and dotted. What does that mean? It means it's the what transition out of the branch. It's, I said it once, it's the default transition. We want one to be conditional. It can only be one default. So the conditional one, under what conditions would they go to the school? Otherwise, they'll go to the default. Under what condition would they go to the school? Can anyone tell me? Yeah, yeah. Um, age in years less than and you could argue if on their 18th birthday, but I'm gonna say less than uh, 18. Uh, um, uh, they will go this way. Otherwise, they'll go that way. Is that okay? I can. I can. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, they go this way. Um, okay. And so I will just make sure this builds. Good. And I will say save as. And there we go. And I'll go upload this. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. What do we do after this? What we do is we go back from the workplace. And guess where they go from workplace? They go home. So uh, I, I, I should have, honestly, I should have arranged this uh, with a more artful sort of characterization, something like this. And, and then uh, I should have done something like this guy from here goes back to this one from here. Um, that isn't, that isn't great, but um, uh, 
kind of had a sense of, of getting a parallel aesthetic. It's, it's really not that hard. Okay. Um, and um, let's suppose they are at home for basically 16 hours. Um, after a timeout of eight hours, so this is, you know, um, uh, uh, go, so um, uh, travel to day, um, uh, day um, arrangement or something like that. I don't know. Day institution, maybe that would be better. Institution. Institution. Okay. And so it'll be after eight hours here. They will go here. And I'm going to say the action here is, and we're going to say this dot move to, move to, yeah. And where are they going to move to? If they're going to the workplace, where are they going to move to? Yeah, the workplace. Again, part of me really wants to say this dot workplace. It's my workplace. Part of me wants to say, leave it out. I'm gonna give in and say it's this dot workplace. How about this way? Where should they go then? With that transition, they should go to their what? To their school. This dot move to this dot. There we go. Okay. And, and then going from workplace back to home, they're going to spend, let's say, eight hours at the workplace. Okay. Um, so, oh, you know what? I said six, six, eight hours here. It should be 16 hours at home. Um, the idea is they're, they're at home for 16 hours of the day and they're at the workplace for eight hours, let's say. There we go. Um, and uh, so this will be um, eight hours. And I'll just say that for school, for simplicity, it's the same. Um, eight hours. Okay. Great. I'm going to build this. Um, and I am going to so it, is it a happy camper? It is. And I'm going to run it. What do you think we should see now? Anyone? Okay, what's gonna happen? Here the time is ticking up. Oh, what happened? Anyone? Who are these folks who are piled on here? Who are these folks? Those are adults in their in their workplace. I should say adults. Um, these are adults. These are who? Children, right? Yeah. Um, so this is during the workday. You could see a certain number of hours in, and then at other times, as as time passes, they will go and move back home, should. Um, so what is going on here? Yeah, but I thought I, thought I, I did this. Um, oh, no, I didn't, no, good call. Sorry, I didn't get enough sleep last night, that's for sure. Okay. So the action here, what should the action be? Good, that's an example of model debugging. What should the action be? Good, yeah, this dot move to what? Yeah, this dot home. Okay, and what about this one? Any difference? No, same thing. Okay, now, now, we're, in, now we're cooking with gas. Okay, cool. Excellent. Um, so time passes, people move to their workplace and work to their home. 
uh, or to their school rather. Um, sorry. Um, so it's eight hours. They're spending eight hours in each week. Good question. Um, there are there are several different ways it could be done. Um, uh, one, yeah, there, there's there's several ways that uh, one could do it. Uh, if you were interested, it would probably take. Let me let me just think for the most elegant how to do that. Um, so, uh-huh, 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 um, yeah, yeah, um, yep, um, mm, 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 yeah, no, 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 yes, I know. Oh, that's, that's, that's elegant. Yeah, you could do it that way. Okay, yeah, I could do it. You want me to do it? Yeah, sure. 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 If you want me to do that, I'll do that. Okay, sure. So the question was, um, how hard would it be to have one person in every home? So right now, people, to, just to remind people, um, each person, is assigned to a random home. And now I want to have them assigned in such a way that they don't go to just random homes that, that every one of the homes is guaranteed to be occupied. Ready to, ready to see that? Yes, John. Uh, yep, that's correct. Yeah. Um, yes, there is. Um, I mean, this is Java, so you could declare certain things as private or something, but um, it's not like these mechanisms here, like parameters and so on, are, are not by default in a, in a private section of the agent. In fact, you cannot tell a, a, any logic, make those invisible to other agents. So, so it, it depends on convention and self-discipline. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's a software engineer sitting there. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's true that you could have awfully gnarly code with that. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do to answer your question, to, to us make sure that every home is assigned an agent, as long as there are enough agents, enough good people, is I'm going to assign a home based on, um, based on the sort of index of this person. So each person has an index and you can see it here. Um, uh, so index of the replicated person, okay? Um, and so each person, like person zero would have, you know, like if there are 250 people, they're gonna have indices zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 249, okay? And we can assign a home based on that. Now. The code for this is is going to be um, not horrendous, but it it'll be a little bit more code than this. May I undertake it? Okay. So what I would do is I would do homes dot get homes dot get, um, and I'm going to get a home at a certain index. What index is this going to be? It's the index of the current person. And this tells me that's called index. It's, it gives me this information index. It's the person index. Modulo, the number of homes. Um, so if there are three homes, the first person in the population will go into home zero. The second will go into home one. The third will go into home two. 
the next person will go into home zero, and then home one, and then two, and then zero, one, two. We'll just apportion them each like that, which I think is a rather attractive solution. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I want to make sure our food is protected. Do you want me to be both there? Are they? Okay, good. Excellent. Um, I can't see people in Syriac. Yeah, sorry, I can't see who that is. My eyes are uh, between the backlight and so on. Thanks. I just want to make sure we had too much tilt yesterday. Okay, so uh, index, and then there's going to be um, homes. There we go, and and it's going to be dot size, okay. So, so basically, each person is going to be placed into the home given by their index modulo the number of homes. Um, and uh, I think this will work rather swimmingly, if I might add. Um, uh, yeah, just just a moment. Um, I want to make sure it works too. Yeah, so now every home has a person. Can you see that? And uh, if we go look at person zero, they're in home zero. Person one is in home one. Person two is in home two. Person three is in home three, and so on. And it would rise until we get to the number of homes, which is what, 25? Is it? What's the number of homes? Sorry? Uh, 50 homes? Okay. You know, um, we'll soon enough see. Here we go. Um, uh, okay. So, yes, probably is. Okay. Um, so here we go. Boom, boom, boom. And what we're going to go up to is 50. So each of these is going into their own home. And it's going to fill up all the homes here. And now this is the last empty home originally. And then this person was put into there. And now the next person is put into home zero. You see, it just kind of puts them all in the home. And I, 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 I'd rather like that solution, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, okay. Um, okay, I hope my PAs can learn a little bit from, from these. Observation. So it's now posted. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. There we go. Sure. Okay. So, um, can they see me over here? A little sorry. What what is amp? Oh, like an ant. Oh, I thought you said I looked like amped up or something. Um. Uh, okay, I, I don't know if they can. Uh, okay. Okay. Is is it, yeah. Okay. So. So basically, the question was, how can I ensure that all the homes are filled, all right? And my idea for addressing this, just think off the top of my head was, okay, look, we want, you know, th this is only possible if there are enough agents, enough people. And if there are enough people, we'll sort of dole them out to each home in turn, right? Um, one by one, they'll fill each home. And then if there's more people than homes, we'll start again and start filling home zero and one and two and three. We'll keep on doling out people to these homes in a very regular way until we're done with the people, right? Until all the people have a home. Um, that was the sort of simplistic idea that, um, you know, that, that will work to guarantee that each home is filled with a person as long as the number of persons is greater than the number greater than or equal. And so how did I accomplish? Well, you need to understand a few things. Um, this is 
a little bit of Java, but it's, it's a little bit of mathematical thinking. The issue is not Java. The issue, the issue is the kind of mathematical conception of it. The way in which you can do that is you can take the number of the person in the population and take it modulo the, the, the sort of number of homes to figure out in what home this person goes. So if this is person zero, they're gonna go to home zero. If this is, per, let's suppose there's three homes. Let's suppose there's a total of three homes, okay? Suppose we have a hundred people. It's gonna be some crowded home. But um, suppose we have a hundred people, there's just three homes, okay? Person zero, you always start things at zero and so um, it's almost fighting thing with math. Um, uh, person zero is gonna go to home zero. Hmm? Person one is gonna go to home one. Person two is gonna go to home two. But now person three, there's no home three. You have to start again, the very first home, right? Home zero. Person four is gonna go to home one. Person five is gonna go to home two. Person six is gonna go to home zero. Person seven is gonna go to home one. We're just, we're just sort of pulling them out you know, to, to each, each home and possible home in turn. And that's exactly what this does. So there's a certain number of homes. This is, suppose it were three. Homes dot size is the number of homes. Suppose it were three. This is the index of the person. I'm person zero. And, and you say, what is that modulo this? Um, that, that's basically saying, divide by this and take the remainder. So if this is person zero, dividing by this and taking the remainder is zero. If it's person one, dividing by this and taking the remainder is, is it, this goes zero times into it and the remainder is one. If it's person two, home dot size goes zero times into it and it's remainder two. If, if it's person three, home dot size, which is three, goes once into it with a remainder of zero. And so they're going to home zero as well. You know, person four, this modulo. If there's this notion of modulo, and, it, and again, this is, when we, when we say that, you know, there are challenges with modeling, people again fixate on, on programming. But if you're doing any sort of modeling, these sort of little, little mathematical puzzles come up quite a lot. And what we're dealing with here is is something more at the level of um, you know this uh, this this level here it's it's this this part here this is just how I write it in Java but the question is what I write it's not how do I write it in Java is not the hard thing the hard thing is what's the mathematical relationship and it's something called modulo if I if I if I want to compute something modulo I I want to write a sequence modulo, um, uh, it'll be zero, and it, suppose it's modulo three, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. Um, that's a, a modulo sequence. I'm counting up mod two, and it just rolls over to zero, it starts again, rolls over to zero. Um, that, that's, that's essentially what this, this thing um, means this. This percent sign means take it modulo this thing. So modulo three. Um, so by the way, if I wrote the sequence of numbers zero, so this is the number. Suppose this is the number, and I want to take it modulo three. This is exactly what I get, um, and and so on. So. You know, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each of them take in mod three. Zero mod three is zero. One mod three is one. Two mod three is two. Three mod three is zero. Um, it's the remainder when you divide this number by three, what's the remainder that's left over? So three divided by three goes in evenly. There's zero remainder by zero. Four, if you divide it by three, there's a remainder of one. Right? There's one left over. You divide four by three, you get one. There's three plus one. This is, 
you know, you divide it by three, three goes once into it plus, and then you have to add two to it. And that's why it's zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So that's, that's what that is. This is a mathematical relationship. And, and it's really not about Java or about, it's, it's not really deeply about any logic. It's just when I want to apportion things in a regular way is what we, we use. So that's an example of this kind of mathematical reasoning that I was talking about sort of being used in, um, in modeling. And no matter what sort of modeling you do, system dynamics modeling, agent-based modeling, discrete event simulation, these little mathematical things about how to express it mathematically come up, tend to come up. And in my mind, those are deeper things than like the, the computer program. I don't know if that's helpful. But, um. Okay, any other questions on this? We have people moving around in space. And, you know, if we had time, and unfortunately don't, um, without sacrificing GIS coverage. Maybe I'll, I'll ask you if you want to do that. Um, uh, we could take this model and, you know, we could add extra dynamics, right? We could have people exposed to adverse social pressures in the workplace or at home. We could have them, you know, carry um, pathogen back and forth. We could have them undergo influence in terms of peer effects, peer pressure effect for engaging in substance use. Um, we could have them bullied in these different environments um, by workplace colleagues or by schools. And, you know, uh, and then, um, uh, you know, while they're at home, they have a chance to uh, potentially engage in, in um, activities that would help remediate that. You know, there's any number of different sort of layered health issues we could layer in a model like this. But what I've shown is how you can capture mobility in space back and forth. One thing I didn't emphasize um, because I was going to post it and so on is if you run this um, and you have these people circulating, um, uh, if you run it slow enough, you will actually see them. So they're at home. So at hour 16, they should go to work. Right? It's hour six, hour seven, time is counting. By the way, notice it's the beginning of today. Um, hour eight is passed, but it, when hour 16 comes, they should go to their workplaces and schools, right? If I slow this down a bit, I'm going to, to do this. You'll probably see them move. And in fact, I can set their speed with which they move. Um, maybe some people have different speeds than other. Maybe some people are on walkers. Some people are on, you know, wheelchairs. Some people are on canes. Some people are on skateboards, and they they move at different speeds. Um, so here we go. We're approaching the witching hour, um, and I'll I'll speed it up for a moment. And now I'm going to toggle it back as we get close to 16 hours. Okay. Um, here we go. And I think you'll see them. Now, I'm, I'm being lazy. I should, I should really just go set their speed. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Watch this. Okay, we're approaching 16 hours. I will prognosticate that they should move soon if my mental model is correct. There we go. But they moved so quickly, you couldn't even really see them in transit. They moved in a, in a flash of an eye. Um, um, so maybe it's because they only live 10 meters from from, from uh, you know, or 10 meters from their school or something. Maybe we could change their, uh, this would be interesting. Hmm. Um, so one thing I could do is I could really slow them down. So in person, I think it's in person, um, under dimensions of movements, you could say how quickly they move. And they move like 10 meters per second. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty speedy. I'm gonna say they move one meter per second. That's even, that's like, that's, that's moving. Um, what, what do you think? Um, a meter a second? That's like, that's moving. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't want my US colleagues asking for feet. Um, so maybe I'll say 0.5 meters per second. 
No, I, I mean, I'm okay. If you want to do feet per second, that's okay. Um, yeah, you, that's right. You could do kilometers per hour or, or miles per hour. Yeah, okay. We'll just leave it at 0.5 meters per second. That's, you know, stately pace, right? Um, but we could also make the distances larger. So let's go to main, go down main, and let's set it to be, you know, uh, further distance. And this is probably going to have repercussions that I don't fully appreciate right now. But I'm going to say that this um, a ruler length corresponds to um, what uh, 500 meters, or that's that's kind of that's kind of large, right? Um, Maybe, maybe I'll do 400 meters, sure. And, and then for person, I'm going to set it to be comparable, 400 meters uh, for that. And I'm probably not fully understanding the implications of all this for the appearance we're going to see. We're probably going to see tiny homes or something weird like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, somehow people loom large still. Um, I, I think, yeah. Okay, now you can at least see them moving, right? Um, um, they're, they're moving back and forth, but the workplaces are tiny. You see them in there? See, see that tiny, <laughs> the, the factory, <laughs> see that? That's the factory to which they <laughs> exhibit, you know, a rather outsized appearance um, compared to the factory. They're, it's kind of like a football they all jump on. Um, so, um, but but you could kind of see them commuting to the football, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Enough said. You can you can play around with scales uh, as you see fit. Okay. So we could layer all sorts of health issues atop this. Um, I don't think we have time to without sabotaging our GIS. Any questions? Oh, we're just on. Before we take a break, and then we'll go into GIS. Any questions? Questions online? Tiny homes. Um, uh, and dig in the speaker screen to see him speak in a larger screen. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can use the speaker screen in Zoom to see my screen. I didn't know that embiggen was a word. That's okay. Um, okay. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. So we'll stop for 10 minutes and then we'll recoup and we'll jump into GIS if that's okay. Okay. Great. And by the way, the good thing is what you just learned will apply in GIS. It's just you'll have more choices and more resources you can take advantage of and more sophisticated routing should you choose to choose it. And you can ask for distant geographic distances between things. So the, the lessons we've been learning here will carry over to GIS. Okay, so let's break for a moment for 10 minutes and we'll be back. Thank you. And begin. 